Hi, this is Cassandra from Homeschool Peace. Today I'm talking all about Matthew C. Beta. So whether you are new to Matthew C. or you are moving from alpha to the beta level, hopefully this walkthrough video will give you some really good ideas of what is included in Matthew C. Beta. If you're new to my channel, you may want to check out some of the other Matthew C. videos that I have, including a pros and cons video. I have those links below, but let's just jump into Matthew C. Beta, and where I want to start is just talking about placement. Matthew C. does not use a traditional grade level in the naming of their levels through the program, so you're not going to see like first grade, second grade, third grade math. Instead, what you're going to see is the Greek alphabet. So their first level is primer, and after primer, you're going to see alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and it's gonna keep going. So what I really like about that is if you have a student coming from a different math program, and after doing some of the testing and checking to see where your child should place, you realize that they do need to maybe start in that alpha level. They're not feeling like maybe they're starting at a different grade level than they should. Instead, what you're doing is you're focusing on what your child knows or does not know, and making sure that they're starting at the right starting point. And I think that's something really great about homeschooling is you can really tailor the curriculum to where your student is. Matthew C is a mastery style program, so they want the kids to really understand the material before they move to that next level. So if you go to the Matthew C website, you can see that they recommend their primer level, let's say for kindergarten, the alpha level is typically recommended for first grade, betas being second grade. But what I would recommend is actually before just picking based on the grade level, is to use the Matthew C placement test, and I do have that link below. That's a great place just to test your child, see you know, if they take the test for alpha and they do really great, then go ahead and give them the test for beta. And if obviously they struggle in the beta test, then obviously that's where you can start in that beta level. When you are testing your student, if you realize that they're sort of on the line, like you know, maybe you know, they need a little extra work on some of their math facts, you know, it's not saying that you couldn't start in beta, but maybe if it's a summer break right before you start, you could spend some time practicing your single digit addition and subtraction facts. And I think that's one thing to really point out is when you're in the alpha level, that this first level, there's a lot of things that go on in this level from uh, learning how to tell time and maybe working a little bit on skip counting and things like that. So there's a lot of great things in here, but if I had to sort of boil it down to, you know, what is the main things coming out of alpha that your student should know, they should really understand place value and then they should know their single digit addition and their single digit subtraction facts. So if you feel really comfortable coming from a different program that your student knows those math facts, then moving to beta would be a great idea. If you go through this and you feel like, you know, my child really, you know, struggling with those math facts, there's no problem starting with that alpha level. Even if you have a student, maybe that is in second grade, because there is no grade level written anywhere, you can just start your student where they need to be. So the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna actually compare a little bit about with the alpha level compared to beta, just so if you are coming from alpha moving into beta, you can sort of have an idea for how the material looks a little bit different, maybe the increase in problems, and you know, what is exactly then covered in this beta level. If you're coming from alpha and you're curious of what's different or the same moving into that beta level, you know, one of the things that is the same is that you are going to be getting a teacher manual, you have your student workbook, you're going to have a separate test workbook, and then you have your DVD. So if you did use Alpha, those are sort of the pieces that are very similar. You're also going to be using the Matthew C blocks. You use those in Alpha, you are also going to use those in Beta. And if you're new to Beta and you do not have a set of blocks, I would highly recommend getting that set of blocks. It is mixed in with all the different lessons. It says when you're supposed to pull those out and it really just strengthens um, the lesson material as your child can have something hands-on that they can work on. So you are going to use your blocks within the Beta level as well. When looking at Alpha and Beta, there is 30 lessons in both. So that's the same thing moving into the Beta level. Expect 30 lessons and your tests mixed in with your final tests. When I look at Alpha and Beta, you know, Alpha I felt like had a really nice, you know, slow introduction, sort of bringing some of the concepts in that your child might have learned through that primer level if they did that level. I see that same thing into Beta, so that's very similar, that there's like a slow, like for the first like lesson or two, a little bit of an introduction, bringing in place value, talking about rounding, sort of getting them back to where they need to be, and then it moves right into that multi-digit addition and subtraction. You know, one of the 
difference is that I felt like with both levels is on alpha, you know, you're talking about a worksheet that may have 14 or 15 problems on it, but those problems are just single digits. So your child only needs to basically put, answer one math problem for each question on that page. Now, when you move into beta, you know, it's just the nature of having multiple digit addition and subtraction. You know, instead of just having one small math problem they're doing, you know, maybe they're adding up two or three digit numbers and that's obviously just increasing how many sort of small addition or subtraction problems they're doing. So I would say I felt like beta, the worksheets took my student a little bit longer to go through and it wasn't because he didn't know the facts, it was just that there's just a couple extra steps to do for each problem. So the worksheets just were a little bit longer. So just maybe expect that probably is one of the changes I would say is just a little bit lengthier on the worksheets when they're working through it. So now I just want to take some time and actually just show some close ups of the beta teacher manual as well as the beta instructional guide so you can see what's then included within the lessons. The first thing to take a look at is this great chart that's at the beginning of all of the student workbooks. This is going to outline the pages that are included in the workbook, as well as give a really great place where you can check off or record grades for your student if that's something that you do grades uh, when you go through the different lesson material. You can see at the top, you see where it says lesson practice and you see pages A, B, and C. If you're new to math, you see, math you see the first three pages of the student workbook that they go through for each lesson is material based on what they just learned. So they're really diving into that content, practicing that material that they're covering within their lesson. Within the pages D, E, and F, that's what's called their systematic review. Though Matthew sees a mastery style program, they still take time every single lesson to do reviews and go back to the material that they've taught through the previous lessons. And I really do like that. I love that my children are mastering the material, but still have a time to practice those skills that they've learned in previous lessons. And then you can see a spot where it has the tests as well with the unit tests and the final tests. One of the sheets that is not included within this chart is sheet G. So each of the lessons have a sheet G, which is their sort of their fun worksheet. It can be sometimes dot to dot, a coloring worksheet, a crossword puzzle. My students really look forward to sheet G in their lesson of just being able to apply the skills that they've learned in a very fun way. So then now I'm going to jump into an actual lesson. I'm going to be taking a look at lesson 18 and we're gonna start in the teacher manual. Now in this lesson, it is multi-digit column addition. So I, where I like to start is taking a read through the material and making sure that I have an understanding of what we're covering for this lesson, for that week, whatever we're going through, as well as taking a look at these examples. And the examples really do spell out how you would go through these problems. And these examples are really great to just do up on the board with your kids. And then I, I like to then watch the video with my student as well, making sure that I really have an understanding of what's being covered in that lesson. One of the things that is included in this particular lesson is a mental math section. And that's why I really make sure that I'm not just watching the video because it can with math you see, you can get into a trend that you're watching the video and then doing the workbook and almost like teaching from the DVD. Make sure you're still reading the teacher manual and going through it because they have some great tips and tricks and ideas and as well as extra activities like this one with a mental math that you can go through with your student asking those questions and so I really like that as part of the lesson. So now let's take a look at some of the worksheet pages that are part of lesson 18 and so I mentioned that the first three so A, B, and C are going to be based on the material that they're that they've just learned in that lesson so you can see that column addition you can see that rounding so they're going to go through this worksheet page and finish that. On the back side of all these worksheet pages, you see story problems. So it's something that's included within our Matthew C lessons are great problems that you're able to go with your student and make sure that they're able to really apply those, those skills that they're learning to more of a real life situation or problem. You see for B, very similar sim to what we've just seen in C as well. So A, B, and C all with the lesson material. Now taking a look at 18D, now we're moving into that systematic review, bringing up the things that they've learned in the previous lessons. So the first three problems on this D sheet you can see is what they covered in the lesson, but then they move into some other things, even some reviewing some subtraction facts, working on some skip counting, as well as some other story problems. And so the systematic review continues for sheet E and then sheet F. 
And then on sheet G, you can see here, this is that application and enrichment sheet. So it looks like you're there doing some measuring here. They're going to be using a yardstick, measuring a table, measuring a rug. So just some fun activities. And like I said, sometimes it's like this, other times it's a maybe a dot to dot or a crossword puzzle. Just something that's fun that they're applying the skills that they've learned from those previous lessons. So now I'm just gonna take a minute and flip through the student workbook just so you can get a feel for other types of pages that are included within the lesson material. I hope this was helpful going through the Matthew C. Beta material, just so you have a better idea of what's included in the program. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those questions below. I'd love to be able to answer them for you. And before you leave, don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.